This is a gimbal tutorial. And now you give the camera to the baby. He's holding the camera. ones but I love gimbals. I've always wanted to do my own Michael Bay kind of shots you know with the parallax effect and since I've had a camera I've always tried to stabilize it on different kind of systems like homemade cable cam, RC car or now gimbals. Welcome back on my channel my name is Guillaume Cornet and I'm a filmmaker. So today we are talking gimbal and three years ago I purchased my first gimbal. It was a DJI Ronin MX and I had no idea what I was doing. Today's example will be on the Ronin S because this is the only gimbal I have with the Ronin 2 and I think it's a bit more appropriate to do it on the Ronin S. But it should work exactly the same for other brands like Zion Crane or the Feiyu Tech or the Tilta gimbals. DJI released the Ronin S about I think two and a half years ago and it was kind of a very revolution because it was the first gimbal that was small at the same time but with powerful motors. As of today, I don't know if this gimbal is the best one but it was very well for me. The reason that pushed me to do that video is over the years I've been with plenty of other filmmakers and sometimes they bring their own camera gear and their own gimbal and I've noticed I had some issues sometimes when I was editing their footage and I know the main cause of the trouble was the gimbal and the way they balanced it so that's why we are going to cover that today. So basically the goal we want to achieve is to have a camera that's perfectly balanced which means if we let go the camera the gimbal we test here. Before starting anything, this is a gimbal. Here we've got an handle and I'm going to try not to break it, but basically this part here on the Ronin S is the battery. Here we've got a tripod stand. Here I've got two mounts. Uh, that's something I purchased from Small Rig just to be able to mount accessories like a monitor or a microphone as well. This part here is the main unit, it's the brain. We have a small joystick, a mode button and a record button. I won't cover the modes of the Ronin today, but if you want a video about that, just let me know and we can cover this. Uh, there are a few like cool tricks and cool uh, functions that, that gimbal can do. And then here at the top, so that's the stabilization unit. So on most gimbals, you have three motors. So one, two, and three that are controlling all three axes. That one here controls your uh, tilt, that one here controls your roll, and that one controls the rotation around the main axis. Most gimbals only have three axes. The only time you see more axes usually will be stabilization system that uh, Shotova is using, those big ball you see at the front of the helicopters. I believe those have five or six axes stabilization, so it's a gimbal within a gimbal. First step is going to set up the camera. We'll mount first the base plate. We are going to use, a, that's a Sony SL R3 with a G Master 24 to 70. By experience, you will know where your center of gravity is. So you use your fingers like this, and well, you can see it's pretty much around here. If I had the mounted here, like the camera would fall forward. So it's just a good thing to know already to have a look at your camera and your equipment and try to find where the center of gravity is. Let me mount the base plate here on the running S. We have uh, it's basically two plates in one and plus a lens. Mount. G masters are quite front heavy and in my case here like it's heavier than the body of the camera. I'm going to make sure to have the base plate as far forward as possible. The other thing you need is a good tool. Go tight but don't go too crazy otherwise what's going to happen is you are, you're going to ruin your thread and over time it's going to wear off and you may have to replace that in the paint. Trust me, I've done it this year on this camera. I have the lens mount and kind of push so that it supports the lens, but don't go crazy again. What's going to happen if you push too much here, so you're going to generate a lot of strength here on the lens mount and that's never good to have. So that's pretty much it. Our camera is ready. I'm going to have to remove the lens cap. As I mentioned, you want your camera to be kind of ready for filming. If you have an LD filter or a lens hood, mount them on now. ND filter, I'm going to use my lens Hood. let's assume that we are going to film outside and usually I would make sure there is nothing else on the camera if the if you have a neck strap just remove it because you won't need it on the gimbal and it's going to be in the way and change as well the way distribution of the camera I'm going to say it many times throughout this video the more compact your camera is the better it's going to work on a gimbal something else is the more weight you have 
away from the center of the gravity, the more complex it's going to balance uh, your camera on the gimbal. Basically, have the camera ready to shoot and uh, let's assume that's what we want to use. We are going to slide in the camera here, make sure the safety stop is on. I'm going to have the camera this way so you can see the first and that's my technique and that's how I work when I, I balance my gimbal. I always start with the locks and the axes the closest to the body of the camera and I'm going away from the body. So I'm going to do uh, that one back and forth first and then I'll do the tilt and then I'll do the roll and then I'll do that axis. So just do them one at a time. Don't try to do them all at once. So right now I've got all the other axes tightened except my uh, front and back. If you have a flip screen or anything, you want to put it in the position you're going to use it now. However, I strongly suggest you not to use any flip screen on the side because as we said before, you're going to offset the center of gravity and create more moments away from the center of gravity, which means uh, it's going to create unwanted vibration. Moreover, if you have a screen that goes on the side and it's windy, trust me, it can actually affect the wind we push on the screen. Another thing is that's the original Ronin S. If you are using the new Ronin SC or a Ronin 2, for example, there is a small switch on the other axis that you can lock which means you can work on one and isolate one axis at a time. Here, I'm going to use my left hand to lock uh, my roll and we are going to just adjust the pitch, the tilt, trying to find uh, the middle. And something I forgot, here I've got a 24 to 70 zoom lens and that one here, as you can see, goes in and out. And that's going to be a big issue because every time you're going to change your focal, you are going to change your center of gravity. So here I'm moving the center of gravity this way. And if I retract the lens entirely, I'm moving the center of gravity closer to the body. Uh, depending on what you're going to film, if you know that you're going to use only 70 millimeter, the wall shoot, I would suggest that you balance the camera with your zoom already set at 70 millimeter. If you don't know, however, what focal you are going to use and you are going to change, I would suggest you to use the middle focal. So here on the 24 to 70, it's going to be around 40 millimeters. So that's going to cover most of the range. And every time I will need to zoom into 70 or zoom down to 24, I'll be able to do so and without offsetting too much the center of gravity. It doesn't have to be perfect first try, but let's try to get as close as possible and I'm going to lock that hatch here. We can see the camera still moves a bit forward. It's not too bad. We are going to move away from the axis and do the second one. So the second one is here, is that tilt. The best way to do that is to actually have your camera this way and you're going to make it face up. It means we have balanced pretty well the front, the, the slide, forward and back of the camera and as well as the tilt axis. Now the next one to do is this one at the back and as you can see if I let it go it goes right on the side which means I have way too much weight on this side of the gimbal and not enough on that side. So we are going to shift the weight of the camera to my right so it's going to be your left. So mine is a bit older so it's not that easy to move. A bit not rusty but I guess some sand or dust. And here we go. It looks pretty good tighten the axis. And if you are on, this on, on the table, on a flat surface, at this stage, your camera should be pretty much balanced. And as you can see here, if I leave it this way, it's not too bad. It's actually pretty good. The best way to adjust this one is to actually shift the weight of the gimbal on the tripod like this, still holding it firmly with your hand, don't drop the gimbal, and see where the weight goes. So it's pretty obvious, it's not balanced here. If the camera goes that way, it means I have too much weight this way and not enough that way. So that one move back and forth the same way here. And I'm going to adjust it a bit. So use the ruler on the gimbal. You should have that on pre much any gimbal to help you adjust, do micro adjustments. So don't do five millimeters at a time. If you're nearly there, just do one millimeter or even half a millimeter at a time. And let's try again. So that side is good. And we are pretty good. Now I just do a one last check by having the gimbal like this. I'm going probably to change my zoom and see here the camera is too back heavy. But if I zoom in a bit, 
it's going to be the opposite. The gimbal will be able to, to hold that. At this stage here, I would be quite happy with my balancing and I would actually go and start filming. One thing to note is that a gimbal will work with pretty much any camera, even if you're not perfectly balanced, even if you haven't done all the steps I mentioned before. The only issue is that you are going to use a lot more power because by having the weight too much forward here, it means the gimbal, the motor of the tilt axis is going to work constantly to try to compensate the weight of the camera that's pushing and putting down. The other thing you want to make sure too is to have everything tightened on the camera and on the gimbal when you are done. Don't let any play because that's where you're going to have some vibrations and I've ruined some shoots uh, for this main reason by having a screw that was loose and even if you don't see it or feel it in the gimbal the gimbal the motors will create some micro vibrations that will trans be transferred to the sensor that can look terrible and I've, I've shot for hours not realizing that uh, my footage would be useless something to think of for sure one thing i would do now is make sure there is no firmware update uh, to do on the gimbal because that can improve their behaviors and now it's time to turn on the gimbal uh, what i would recommend is first not to have the camera like this on the gimbal just try to already have a position that's pretty friendly because you never know like the gimbal can power and just uh, flip and swing a bit too quickly and just break something so just make sure you're already pretty much in position and turn it on here we are on and uh, now i can play around so i do and one thing i would recommend you to do all the time is to auto tune the gimbal on the running s basically to do that you press the m button and the trigger for four seconds so one two three four and um, here it's doing something you can see the light blinking here you can see the camera kind of uh, shaking it's sending inputs into the models to see uh, where the camera and the uh, balancing is and uh, setting up the strength for each model required to operate this kind of setup done all balanced ready to shoot so to recap priority number one you want to perfectly balance or balance as close as possible to being perfect your gimbal that will save you a lot of power and a lot of issues especially wob wobbling potentially or vibrations priority number two you want to condense as much as possible your setups so basically if you don't need the lens hood don't put the lens hood on if you don't need such a big lens, if you don't need an neck strap, if you don't need a microphone, don't use them. That's going to make your whole setup heavier. The closer all the elements are from the center of gravity, the less wobble, the less moment you're creating and the less energy you're spending, the longer the battery life will be. And priority number three, make sure everything is tightened. Flip screens as well may cause some issues. So anything that's loose may create some vibrations. Something to note is that the heavier the camera and your setup is, the more crucial the balancing is. Finally, in step three, I would assemble my accessories like a monitor, external monitor or microphone. So let's do it right now. Try to use cables that are thin like this or very soft that are not too rigid. I used to have um, this cable, this the HDMI cable and the issue with this one is it's too rigid which means it's going, when I'm going to plug it into the camera, it's going to create some force and shift the um, balancing we've just performed. Here, my HDMI mount on the Sony is on this side so make sure it's not in the way so use the joystick to do a full spin here i'm all good i'm clear you can as well assemble a microphone so there are different ways either you mount, you use those modules here from small rig or you can use handles um, depending on the shoot and uh, the work i have to do i'm going to use those handles so this one goes here at the bottom of the base plate. Now is the time to mount all your accessories like your monitor, your microphone. If you have a power cable as well that's powered by the gimbal, I would try to have my camera and this setup as lightweight as possible because you're going to lose your arms pretty much. The smaller, the lighter it is, the better and the less battery we use, the more efficient the gimbal is going to work. Once you have set all your cables, what I would recommend you to do is see if any of the weight has shifted. I know that if I have a power cable, a jack input and the HDMI, I'm going to have more weight on the side of the camera and it's going to try to move that way so I may have to rebalance it. The good thing with that cable I'm using right now is that it's very lightweight and the gimbal doesn't even feel anything. So now let's have some fun and try to balance uh, for example an action cam. I've never done that before so all we need is obviously the action cam. Uh, here it's an Insta360 with the one inch sensor, uh, the mount. If you have a GoPro, just uh, you don't need the cage. 
Turkey and you need uh, this kind of mount, quarter inch screw at the bottom and a normal GoPro mount. So first thing first, it's really hard on this mount to line up. Those are really cheap accessories I bought off Amazon. So for three bucks like you get 20 of those. It's maybe why we actually don't need this one. So the reason we use that one on the Sony is because the lens are so big that you need a bit more space under the gimbal, but I can go directly on the base plate because I've never balanced a camera like this. I'm just going to put it right in the middle of the base plate. Sort of tight and let's have a look. So first of all, I'm expecting it to be very different from the Sony. For this camera, it's pretty straightforward. It's right in the middle. Now this axis here, I need to add. That's actually not going to work. Yeah, so the issue with this camera is um, it's too lightweight at the bottom, so we need more weight at the top. I'm already all the way in on that axis, so let's change strategy. I've got uh, this plate from small rig again, and I've got some counterweight. That's already much better. So it's still not here yet. I'm gonna go with, so I've got 200 grams and 100 grams. I'm going to use a 100 gram. I'm not moving away and changing those axes yet. I'm always focusing on the first one, the first, this one and the tilt axis because there is no point going there if those two are not working. So here we're doing not too bad. Now left and right. So here is uh, something I didn't cover before. As you can see, I'm balanced. I'm not too bad. The issue is the camera is not in line with this axis. And what it does is that if I'm moving left and right, the camera is going to move up and down. If I face it towards you, it's very little, but the center of the camera spinning is not close to that center of rotation. So you want to kind of play with those two. So what I would need to do is actually shift those counterweights here. So I want to move the camera that way, which means that we need more weight that way. And last but not least, let's shift this one. So now is the time we power the gimbal. Let's have a look. Here we go. So same as usual. And here we've got the perfect example. So two things. I didn't auto-tune the gimbal yet. And the other thing is I've got a loose screw here and that's not helping for the vibration. So don't let the gimbal do that for too long. You're going to ruin your motors. Just auto-tune it. Stay on M and trigger button. Here we go. So we managed to balance Insta360. The motors are doing exactly what they are supposed to do. So that's it for the Insta360. Now let's switch to something opposite, way too big for this gimbal. All right, moment of truth. Let's power this gimbal. Always hold the gimbal, it's a good idea. Looks like it's working. So let's maybe, first thing I want to do is I'm going to Rotate it all the way around. And one thing wasn't done was to plug in the microphone. Turn this way. And here you go. You've got the perfect setup. You can always adjust here. And yeah, it's working, it's balanced. And now you've got the teleobjective on a gimbal, which should give some pretty cool shots. So let me go through this setup very quickly. We've got the red Komodo 6K, the Canon 70-200 2.8. I've got uh, a road mic here. I've got my phone that I use that's connected by Wi-Fi to the, to the red. Since the center of gravity is pretty much around here on this camera, I uh, had to move it very far back. As you can tell here, the camera is facing upside down and that's why when I put the gimbal, the lens is facing the other way. So the Komodo is a RF mount camera and my Canon here, my 70-200 is an EF mount, which means I need an adapter. Ideally, what you would need here is use the Canon 70-200 RF. Apparently a very, very good lens and it's much smaller, so it should arrive here. And you might not even need to place the camera reversed. The reason why I place it like this, you're pretty much likely to film like this most of the time. You're holding your gimbal slightly forward. You're not holding the gimbal straight, you're holding it this way, which means if I have the camera facing the other way, the batteries are touching here, that knob and that axis. So it was not working properly and I found out 
for every kind of cameras like this. I'd rather have it facing the other way, so I have more latitude here up and down to stabilize. If I go too much up, obviously my lens is going to touch. I've got enough range of motion to stabilize most moves. The other great thing about that lens, and I'm not sure about the RF 7200, but the great thing about that one is the, if I zoom in and zoom out, as you can tell, there are no moving parts. It's only the lenses inside, optical elements inside that are shifting to create the zoom. As a matter of fact, there is less weight shifting back and forth which means a lens like this with no moving part is a bit better for gimbals because you have less weight shifting and the gimbal won't even tell that there is an element moving back and forth. If I turn off the gimbal, so I perfectly balanced it. Here you can tell the, um, the weights towards the back. If I zoom in, it's even more. So I'm shifting, I'm still shifting some weight, but it's not as much as uh, the 24 to 70, whether it's the E mount or the EF mount. I'm using two counterweights, so both of them are 200 grams, which adds quite a lot of weight, and I'm not uh, really a fan of adding so much weight at the back, but the issue is because of that limitation on this axis and uh, the lens eating, the center of the gravity was too high on the camera, so I had to lower it, so that's why I have some counterweights here. All the accessories I have on the Ronin right now, I will link them into the description if you're interested, but that handle and this one and those clamps here on the side, as well as the counterweights or even the base plate with the quarter inch thread, everything is made by small rig. They are fairly cheap and uh, usually they do the job very well. All right, so let's try something even heavier. So basically here we've got a Red DSM-T2 Gemini mounted upside down to lower the, the center of gravity because as you can tell here, the lens goes at the top uh, much higher on the camera. To compensate and lower the center of gravity to have it closer to the gimbal, I've set up the camera upside down here with the that's a Canon 24 to 70 at the front and here I've got the jetpack module directly connected to a cable and that's a V-mount battery belt clips that can power this camera for a couple of hours. I just slide it down and I have it at my belt. The main reason why I do that is to have the most lightweight setup. The Red Gemini is really heavy, so you don't want to have to carry too much weight during the whole day, especially here, I didn't even mount the monitor. So what I would do is on this handle on the side, there are two screws and I would mount the Red monitor seven inch that would be connected with a cable directly to the side. But let's try to power that thing. Here you go, I'm going to auto-tune it. Uh, I've set the lens to 24. Let's say we are shooting wide, so the balance is not perfect because it's such a big camera for a gimbal that is not made for this kind of uh, camera, heavy camera that um, it's very hard to find the balancing point in the center of gravity. In order to get the center of gravity right here, um, I have to do a bit of a MacGyver kind of setup where I'm using a base plate uh, of the original Ronin S and here I've got a weight that I'm offsetting here. The whole reason why I do that is because I don't want to put any weight at the bottom of the gimbal. Since the camera is so big, I have to slide it all the way back and it, if I add some weight here at the back, it will touch the arms, which means I won't have any range of motion. It's pretty much perfectly balanced. No, it's not perfectly balanced, but it works very well. The monitor obviously adds some weight. It's not production friendly, it's quite heavy, but it works and I've shot a few weddings and a few uh, commercials. You can get some great shots. Something else I didn't talk about is that on the Red Gemini, you have to manual focus everything. Obviously, I will do it by hand most of the time. It's possible to add a wireless follow focus or follow focus directly mounted here. The only thing is that you need to use a plate probably here at the top or at the bottom on top, a cheese plate on the red. I'm using the Tilta Nucleus Nano. It's a very small wireless motor that plugs in directly to, into the gimbal. So the gimbal powers the motor and I will have the follow focus on the side. It's pretty much 
it. Like, um, as you can see, I'm kind of stripping down the camera as much as possible. Let me know how you go. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you actually learned something from the video, please don't forget to click on subscribe and like that video. That really helps me and the YouTube algorithm and all that kind of thing. So if you have any question, if you want to see anything about gimbal moves or even about the gimbal settings, because we didn't go into the app for the giant running ass, please let me know in the comment below. And uh, I'll see you next week. See ya. Just playing together. Leave us alone. <laughs> Hey, we're filming a tutorial on gimbals today. <laughs> Here, you're supposed to let me take the picture for the thumbnail. I'm ready. Can you take a photo of me for the thumbnail? <laughs>